Hello everyone. Welcome to Cisco Support Community. My name is Rajesh and I'm part of the Cisco Support Group. Today we will look at a basic but yet important topic. VLANs on wireless LAN controllers. We will start with an overview of how Cisco Unified Wireless Solution implements VLANs and then look at a demonstration of configuring VLANs on wireless LAN controllers. On a wireless LAN controller, there are five different types of interfaces. Some of them are mandatory and are configured at startup using the configuration wizard, while others are optional. Let's look at the different types of interfaces on the wireless LAN controller. We have the management interface, the AP manager interface, virtual interface, service port interface, and the dynamic interface. Let me give a brief summary of the primary function of these interfaces. The management interface is the default interface for in-band management of the controller and connectivity to enterprise services such as AAA servers. It is also used for communications between the controller and the access point. The AP Manager interface is used for all layer 3 communications between the controller and the lightweight access points after the access points have joined the controller. Next we have the virtual interface. This interface is used to support features like mobility management, DHCP relay, layer 3 web authentication, VPN termination and so on. The service port interface is used to control communications with the service port. The service port is used for out of band management of the wireless LAN controller. And last we have the dynamic interface which is also known as the VLAN interface. These are user defined interfaces and are designed to be analogous to VLANs of the wired networks. Ok, let's look at the dynamic interfaces in detail. Dynamic interfaces as mentioned earlier are user defined interfaces. These interfaces are similar to the VLANs of the wired networks and allows the administrator to compartmentalize wireless LAN traffic. Cisco Unified Wireless Solution supports 802.1Q tagging and Cisco strongly recommends using tagged VLANs for dynamic interfaces. A controller can support up to 512 dynamic interfaces. Each dynamic interface is individually configured and allows separate communication streams to exist on the distribution system ports of the controller. You can assign dynamic interfaces to distribution system ports, wireless LANs, layer 2 management interface or the layer 3 AP manager interface. VLANs can be configured either using the GUI or using the command line interface on the controller. In our demonstration, we will create two dynamic interfaces, VLAN A and VLAN B. We will configure VLAN A using the GUI and VLAN B using the command line interface on the controller. Let's begin with the GUI configuration. From the wireless LAN controller GUI, click on controller and then interfaces. It takes us to the interfaces page. This page lists all the interfaces that are presently configured on the wireless LAN controller. We have the AP Manager interface, the Management interface, Service Port interface and the Virtual interface configured on the controller. All these interfaces are configured at startup using the CLI configuration wizard. In order to create a new interface, click New. In the Interfaces New window, we have to provide the interface name and the VLAN ID. In our example, we'll use VLAN A as the interface name and 10 as a VLAN ID. Click on apply. We are now at the interfaces edit window. In this window we can input the configuration parameters specific to this dynamic interface. Under the general information we can see the interface name and the MAC address of the dynamic interface. If the interface is used as a ingress for wired guest LANs, select the guest LAN radio button. If you want to configure the VLAN as a quarantine VLAN, select the quarantine radio button. Since we are configuring a regular dynamic interface, we will leave the configuration section at its default and move to the physical information section. In this section you can configure the port number, which will be the port which is mapped to this dynamic interface and the backup port which will serve as a backup for the primary port. And if we are configuring this dynamic interface as an AP Manager interface, we have to select Enable Dynamic AP Management radio button. In our example, we will use the port number as 2 and the backup port number as 3. And we will move on to the interface address section. 
In this section, we can define the IP address, net mask and gateway of the dynamic interface. We'll use 192.168.1.1 as the IP address and 255.255.255.0 as the net mask and the gateway is 192.168.1.100. Next, we'll configure the primary and secondary DHCP server for this dynamic interface. We have only the primary DHCP server, which, which is 192.168.1.50. If you want to apply an ACL, this is where we select the ACL for the dynamic interface. We don't have an ACL configured. Once the configuration is done, click on Apply to save the configuration. Here we can see that a new VLAN, VLAN A has been created and is listed in the interfaces page. Okay, now let's configure VLAN B using the command line interface on the wireless LAN controller. The first step is to create an interface and associate a VLAN tag. To do this, enter the command config interface create followed by the interface name and the VLAN ID. Next, we can define the IP address, net mask and default gateway of the dynamic interface using the command config interface followed by the interface name, IP address, net mask and gateway. Here is an example. Config interface address interface name which is VLAN B in our example followed by the IP address 172.16.1.1 net mask and the gateway. To associate a DHCP server with this dynamic interface, we can use the command config interface DHCP dynamic interface followed by the interface name which is VLAN B in our case and primary and then the IP address of the DHCP server. That's pretty much it. We have created a dynamic interface using the command line interface. The other parameters can be configured as needed and depending upon the network setup. Let's now verify the interfaces that we have configured using the command line interface. To do this, type the command show interfaces summary. Here we are. The two interfaces that we have configured, VLAN A and VLAN B, are listed. In my next video, I'll explain how a lightweight access point registers with the wireless LAN controller. So keep watching the space for more. Thank you.